Lieutenant Andrews, retract the drill and return to a low lunar orbit. Retracting the DODM. Warning. Impact imminent. Mari Lieutenant Andrews, you need to hurry. Sir, we have a problem. The drill is stuck. Warning. Impact imminent. Degree weight 1.5 tons. Try the hydraulic pressure release. Sir, I've tried that, but I'm not able to. Warning, impact imminent. Lieutenant Andrews, can you read me? Warning, impact imminent. Lieutenant Andrews, this is the Genesis Warning. 7, can you read impact me? Impact imminent. Mare Frigoris A1. LG7, this Warning. is the Genesis 7, can you read me? Warning. Five seconds to impact. Warning. Lieutenant Andrews, can you read me? Danton, can you read me? Now on to our mission. Great men of the past. Men such as Galileo, Newton, and Copernicus brought science out of the dark misunderstanding of Ptolemy. Now in our modern age, it has been rescued once again from Huxley, Darwin, and Sagan. And now we are free to explore from a creation perspective, which will lead to a greater understanding of the cosmos. Lieutenant Andrews, Lieutenant Jennings, Imaging Specialist Andrews and Captain Andrews. I thank you all for your hard work and your diligence, which is why I chose you for this mission. 
This year will be a tough one, but it may prove to be one of the most important explorations in history. Let us be sober, vigilant, and steadfast. But most importantly, may the great God and creator of our universe be glorified, for that is our mission. Launches at 1900. You are dismissed. So, Captain, how is it that you're able to get the ship so close to the sun? That's a good question. The Genesis 7 is equipped with the latest technology capable of withstanding temperatures up to 2 million Kelvin. Interesting. So, what about solar flares? Well, I wouldn't say it'd be a comfortable ride, but this baby can take the heat. Okay. It's been good talking to you gentlemen, but I need to run. Have a good mission. Thank you. Hey, Uncle Nick. Hey. You got a second? Sure, go ahead. I've been working this tool which transforms food on Earth into mobile atoms and brings them instantly to this device, which I call the Instamil. Hmm. Fully prepared. Check it out. Make steak. Wow, I'm impressed. Does this mean no more MREs? No more MREs. That's great. May I make a suggestion? Sure. A new name might not be such a bad idea. Thanks, Danielle. Lieutenant Abby Jennings. Hello. Congratulations on making captain. Thank you. Hey, we're going to be fine. I know. It's just a year is a really long time. I know. I'm going to miss you, too. So how are they doing since the accident? You know, they've adjusted surprisingly well. I think this mission will be good for them. I can't imagine losing both parents at one time. I know, but fortunately they have an exceptional uncle to look after them. Attention Genesis 7 personnel, please proceed to your stations and prepare to launch. Well, I guess it's time to go. the Genesis 7. Please take your seat and fasten your safety harness. Thank you, Molly. Lieutenant Jennings, begin launch procedures. Initiating launch sequence. Lieutenant Andrews, engage main power controllers. Main power controllers are a go, sir. Lieutenant Jennings, ensure fuel system is a go. Fuel system is a go, Captain. Priscilla, check phosphorite image displays. EID units are in working order, sir. Lieutenant Jennings, verify stabilization systems. Stabilization system is a go, Captain. Initiate power system unit. PSU initiated. Check current controllers. Current controllers are a go. Initiate magneto impulse engine. Lieutenant Jennings, all systems are a go. Please verify and begin countdown. All systems are a go. Liftoff begins in T minus 10 seconds. Raise landing gear. Landing gear is up, sir. Set the heading at 232 degrees and raise the nose 6 degrees. Genesis 7 has entered low Earth orbit, stabilizing orbit path. 
Captain, would you like me to engage artificial gravity? Go ahead, Molly. Artificial gravity engaged. Nice catch, sis. Plan on doing some heavy riding. More weighty than your humor. Man, I think we may have broken some speed records. Yeah, those magneto impulse engines really kick out the power. I think we made it into orbit in record time. That 6G climb sure set me back in my seat. I was wondering why you had the power set so high. I didn't know we were so pressed to get here. Please, I cannot take another pun. <laughs> Lieutenant Andrews, before you grace us with another pun, how about pitching the nose toward the Earth six degrees? Yes, sir, Captain. Wow. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? After all these missions, it still amazes me. It testifies of God's mercy that he gave us such a beautiful home. Then why do some people hate him? Hmm. That's a good question. The only way I can answer that is in the beginning, when God created Adam and Eve, he made them righteous. But then they sinned against God, and from that point on, all men are unrighteous, and God must punish them for their sin. But there's good news. God sent his only son to die in our place, so that those who trust in him and turn from their sin can be together with him forever in heaven. With mom and dad? Yes, Priscilla, with your mom and dad. Go ahead, Lieutenant Jennings. Hello, everyone. How does it feel to be hovering 30,000 kilometers above the Earth? It's amazing. I've never seen anything so extraordinary. It looks breathtaking from the images I see. I just received orders from Admiral Croft. He wants you to test the system aboard the Little Genesis 7 lander. Captain. If you don't mind, I'd like Lieutenant to... Andrews, why don't you take the LG-7 for a spin? Yes. Lieutenant Andrews, can you read me? Yes, Captain. I'm aboard LG-7. All systems are online. Ready to release docking arms. Okay, Lieutenant, release docking arms. Docking arms released. Reverse trim thrusters. Trim thrusters reversed and the little G is disengaged from the docking bay. Proceed to port wing and begin flyby. I am now clear of Genesis 7, beginning first pass. How does she handle, Lieutenant? She handles great. You guys thought the view was great from in there. The Earth doesn't just look big, it is big. Molly, just how big is the Earth? The Earth is 12,756.2 kilometers in diameter, with a land mass of over 149 million square kilometers. There are approximately 7 billion human persons inhabiting the Earth. That's enough for every person to have 1.6 acres of their own space. That's a lot of land. And they say we're overpopulated. Yeah, that's what they say. Lieutenant, could you direct the LG-7 toward the Northern Pole Horizon Line? Yes, Captain. This would be a great time to test out the atmospheric mapping spectrometer. Danton, could you set the image so I can pick up layers of the atmosphere? Only if you say pretty, please. Please. Captain, you've got to see this. Danton has modified the image so that every layer of the atmosphere is a color. See? There are the layers. This red layer is the troposphere. See how thick it is? This is where most of the clouds are and where the weather occurs. And see? Here's the stratosphere in the blue. This is where the old commercial jets used to fly. Can you imagine that? This green layer is the mesosphere, and it protects from meteor impacts because this layer creates friction, which burns most of them up. The yellow layer is the thermosphere. 
It is where the old International Space Station used to orbit before the accident. Finally, this purple layer, the exosphere. That's where the atmosphere merges into space. This imager is amazing. It can also generate temperature readings, debris and smog reports, and see the effects of the solar winds and coronal mass ejections. My brother is brilliant. Uh, what was that about brilliant brother? I was hoping you didn't hear that. I would hate for your head to swell and for you to get stuck in that thing. Go ahead, Lieutenant Jennings. Hello, Captain. I have the debris reports. I'm transmitting those to you now. Thank you, Lieutenant Jennings. We'll input those into the system as soon as they arrive. Lieutenant Andrews, bring the LG-7 into dock. Yes, sir, Captain. Bring little G home. Good to have you back aboard, Lieutenant. Good to be back, sir. We were just reviewing the debris reports. There's a lot of space junk out there. Genesis Command is still going to let me fly tomorrow, right? The report shows no immediate concern, but you know as well as I how lunar mascons can make the orbit of debris unstable. They're just making us aware, which is a good thing. Yeah, I would hate for you to get sideswiped by an overgrown Russian refrigerator and go spinning out of control and crash land in some obscure crater somewhere on the dark side of the moon. Okay, okay. I think it's time we all get some sleep. Overgrown Russian refrigerator. May I put that away for you, Uncle Enoch? Yes, thank you. Good morning, Lieutenant. Did you sleep well? Those power system units are pretty noisy. I gotta get that fixed. Good morning, Lieutenant Jennings. Good morning, Captain. I have your next set of orders from Admiral Croft. You are to travel to the moon. Observe the solar eclipse, which will be occurring at 1500 hours. Map the moon with the neutron spectrometer mapping unit and take LG-7 to the moon and collect a hydrogen sample and then transmit all of your findings to Genesis Command. Did you get all of that? Uh, what was that part about spectrometer mapping? Very funny. You have 24 hours to complete this mission. Oh, and Captain, be careful. There's a lot of debris out there. We will. Thank you, Lieutenant Jennings. You heard the lady. Let's go to the moon. Engage MIEs. Yes, sir, Captain. Captain, the data report for the eclipse is in. The total umbra of the eclipse covered an area of approximately 125 square kilometers. The penumbra covered over 10 times that. Amazing. That is amazing, Priscilla. Are you ready to start spectrometer mapping? Yes, sir, Captain. Lieutenant Andrews, it's time to get LG-7 ready for her first mission. Affirmative, Captain. Getting right on it. I'm clear of G7 and beginning my descent to Mari Fragoris A1. Priscilla, I want you to keep track of his every move. I've got him, Captain. Overlay the debris field with Lieutenant Andrew's flight pattern. Debris tracking enabled, sir. Gravitational mapping also enabled for the lunar surface. Good work, imaging specialist. Three hundred meters from A1 landing zone, Captain. According to the H2 image, there is a large deposit of water only a few meters beneath his landing zone. Lieutenant Andrews, you're getting close. Dad used to say that finding water near the surface of the moon would undermine the thought that the moon is really old. Why do you think that is, Priscilla? He said the solar winds would have vaporized the water long ago if the moon was millions of years old. And he would be right. You know, your father was instrumental in getting these missions off the ground. He was a great man of God as well as of science and he believed with his whole heart that the biblical account of creation was true. He was, wasn't he? He gave me this pendant that has Romans 1.20 inscribed on it. I looked it up as soon as he gave it to me and memorized it. 
It says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. My brother, your father, was a great man. I'm hovering over the lunar surface, requesting permission to land. Slow and steady, Lieutenant. I've touched down. Request permission to engage the DOGM. Go ahead, and remind me again what DOGM stands for. Digger of great magnitude. Ingenious, isn't it? Well, you probably won't have to worry about anyone stealing your name. Warning. Impact imminent. Mare for Oh, Kalinic, a lunar mass can have changed the orbiting pattern of a very large piece of debris. It looks to collide very near downtown's position. Impact imminent. Mare Frigoris A1. Warning. Impact imminent. Lieutenant Andrews, retract the drill and return to a low lunar orbit. Retracting the DOGM. Lieutenant Andrews, you need to hurry. Sir, we have a problem. The drill is stuck. Warning. Impact imminent. Sir, it's a very large piece of debris. Debris weight 1.5 tons. Try the hydraulic pressure relief. Sir, I've tried that, but I'm not able. Lieutenant Andrews, can you read me? Lieutenant Andrews, this is the Genesis 7, can you read me? LG7, this is the Genesis 7, can you read me? Warning, five seconds to impact. Warning. Lieutenant Andrews, can you read me? Danton, can you read me? This is Lieutenant Don Ton Andrews, en route to G7. Uncle Lena, he's alive! It's good to hear your voice, nephew. Go ahead, Lieutenant Jennings. Hello, Captain. You all had quite a scare out there. I'm glad everyone's okay. Me too. That was really close. I'm glad you sent the debris field survey. Without it, Don Ton wouldn't have made it. Dantan! I'm so glad you're okay. Aw, oh, sis, I didn't know you loved me so much. I don't ever scare me like that again. Ow, I didn't know love could be so painful. You haven't seen anything yet. <clears throat> so, do you have any new orders from the Admiral? As a matter of fact, I do. He wants you to go to the sun. Before we go, Dantan, there's a lot of debris out there. Let's get rid of some of it. Priscilla, load the debris field data into the turret gun targeting system. Yes, sir, Captain. Loading debris field data into the turret gun. Lieutenant Andrews, prepare to fire the turret gun. Yes, sir. Firing up the Second Amendment. Wow, Danton. That's actually a good name for a change. Thanks. I thought of it myself. Now that we have that taken care of, let's go to the sun. Engage MIEs. Yes, sir, Captain. Engaging MIEs. <laughs>